never tried. Hallelujah, yes. Anybody want to give God praise? Yes. 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 Oh, God, my God, we thank you, Lord. Yes. We thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to need a sanctified reader tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to need a sanctified thank reader you. tonight. Thank you, God. All right. We're going to be starting at verse 1 and reading down to about verse 9. To 11 somewhere in that area amen and um, we're just going to walk through the scriptures tonight i want to talk to you tonight by divine instruction and divine unction to talk to you tonight about being a divine risk taker i'm gonna try my best not to preach tonight okay i'm gonna try to stick just like this a divine risk Y'all can be seated. We're going to walk through the word tonight. Amen. Now, by nature, I'm not a risk taker. I'm a very calculated person. I calculate everything. Amen. I, yeah, I calculate whether, whether if it's something I want to get in, in my budget or how many months it's going to take me to get it if I put this much aside. I'm not a risk taker. I, I always believed in and it was something I used to always teach very heavily um, um, especially back in my founding days about making good decisions when I used to teach a lot of young people about how to make good decisions. That was always the basis and the foundation of my ministry. Practice making good decisions. All right, we ain't uh, radical risk takers. We make good decisions. We, we think things through. We don't, we're not just sporadic, but every now and then, come on with somebody, I found out that God will come to shake up your comfortable place. That God will come shake you out of what you consider normal. He will push you in a direction that you may not be comfortable in. God will push you. He will push you in a place that he has assigned to you. And you may think that you are not qualified for it. God will push you. He will push you in a direction. And he will push you sometimes at a time that you feel like I ain't ready yet. My God, somebody. God will make you jump. My God, before you think you ready, God will make you jump before you think you qualify. God will make you jump before you think you got it all together because the truth be told, once you get it all together, then sometimes we feel like we don't need God. God has to keep us on divine dependency. God got to keep us calling his name. God got to keep us when we say, God, if you don't show us, we don't know what to do. God, if you don't leave, me, I'll be lost. God, if you don't guide my head, they used to say a song that say, I can't even walk. Come on, without I'm trying to stay calm, but I can't walk without you holding, without you holding my head. Anybody feel like me tonight? And God, I need you to lead me. I need you to guide me. If you don't lead me, God, I'm a blind man walking. If you don't lead That sometimes uh, it's good uh, as I practice making good decisions. Uh, sometimes, uh, y'all know they got them books that say for dummies. Uh, my God. Oh, God, they should have wrote one called Decisions for Dummies. Because, uh, oh, my God, I've been trying to make some good decisions in my life. Uh, but when it became to people, my God, uh, people for dummies, my God. Uh, always trying to pick somebody I can help, my God. Uh, and why that me? When they get finished with me, okay? Always trying to pick somebody that, that need them just a little fix and they'll be a good person. If you just get a little work on them, baby, and you find out that God got to work on you, by the time you get finished, because they done broke you down to your lowest common denominator. I found out, baby, I ain't got time for projects. I got to get people who qualify to be in my life. I'm sorry. You got 
house. There's peace in my life. There's peace in my mind. And when you show up, chaos come, baby. I got to send you back in. Because I need peace. Somebody shall peace. I found out I didn't always make the best decisions. I made, might have made good scores on a test. Come on, somebody. Might have done good in English, might have done all right. In science, might have done okay in math. But when it came to people, and I didn't always, I ain't always ace that. But come on, somebody. My God today, God, can I do a retake? Oh, God, Jesus. Fuck that class. Can I? Chapter 5. 
So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Lunch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and come nothing. Somebody say, I didn't try this before. All right. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their neck was breaking. All right, we're going to end it right there. All right, it says, and it came to pass, verse 1, that as the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret. Now, Jesus, we just talked about in Bible study uh, about Jesus being driven in the wilderness by the enemy, and he was there fasting 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible declared that he came out, and when he came out, he came out in the power of the Spirit. Now, that was in Luke chapter 4. So here we are right after in Luke chapter 5, and Jesus is on fire. Somebody say Jesus is on fire. Oh, my God. He's on fire, and the people begin to press around to hear what he has to teach and what he has to preach. And as he is teaching them, he notices these two little small boats sitting there on the lake. They are sitting on the lake, and the fishermen that were in them have retreated. They are not on their boats. They have left their boats by the lakeside. And they have gotten up out of them. They have went and left the boat because they are now washing their nets. The nets are what you use when you're going to catch a big, large sum of fish. Come on, they ain't going with a fishing rod. They ain't going with a little scooper. Come on, they are going with a net. They are in expectation of something big because this is their profession. It is not their hobby. It is not something that they're doing because they ain't got nothing better to do, but it is connected to their livelihood. It is connected to how they feed their families and how they take care of their homes and what they're able to wear and what they're able to afford and what they're able to drive. And they have toiled and they have worked all night trying to catch uh, some fish uh, so that the people around so they can sell to Walmart so they can sell to Bilo uh, so they can sell the food line so they can sell uh, down to the farmer's market uh, so that people can come and buy uh, what they have caught uh, so that the economy can keep going and their personal economy will keep flowing somebody say flow they were out of their boats and they were washing their nets because they had worked all night long. And this night was a wash. This night they did not produce anything. They didn't produce anything. You ever given something your best effort? Come on, somebody. And it did not yield the results that you thought that it would yield. Have you ever felt like you're giving a certain thing your all and you knew that it was going to work because you had a good plan? Come on. You might have had your business plan. You might have got the loan. You might have made the investments. You might have bought all of the bags and the stickers. Come on. You might have went to the uh, to, to UPS and got all of your shipping supplies. Come on. You got everything. You made all kind of investments in this bright idea, but before you know it, you think it's going to blow up because you told 10 people what you're thinking about doing and you find out that everything you bought three years later, still sitting over there in the corner. Matter of fact, you got tired of looking at it. You call, you say, y'all, come get this stuff. Let me find somebody who can use this because I can't do nothing with it. Yo, you had to wash your nets. You say, I can't do nothing with this. They had to 
wash their nets because uh, even if they didn't catch any fish, uh, there would still be things that would get caught in the net. Yes. I'm sorry. That net, would, it would be so big, it would most of the time go down and scrub almost the bottom to catch whatever was in there so it would get all kind of debris. It would get all kind of dead stuff. So you had to wash the nets so the nets would not stink up what you were trying to catch. You had to wash the nets to get the trash up out of there and the debris up out of there. You had to wash the nets. They were washing their nets and then here comes Jesus. Jesus noticed these two boats and he noticed that they were not in there. But he said, okay, well, since you're not using them, let me use them, okay? Let me use your boat. And Jesus stepped on Simon Peter's boat. He was preaching in the crowd at first, but then he said, well, there's a vessel for me to use. Come on. And he got on Simon Peter's boat, and he began to teach, and he began to preach to the people. Now that's funny because, uh, you know, Simon Peter could have easily said, no, you know, uh, uh, that's my boat, you know. Uh, uh, you can't come in my business uh, doing your own thing. But he surrendered all that he had to Jesus. I'm going to move and I'm going somewhere with this. It says that he entered into the ship, which was Simon. And he prayed for him to thrust out a little from the land. And he sat back down. And he taught the people out of, he taught them out of the ship. So Jesus now has turned this man's business into his pulpit. He's teaching. And they're hungry. They're hungry. They're hungry. They're hungry for what Jesus has to say. They're hungry. Jesus is on fire. He just came out of the test of his life and the test of his ministry. I don't know about y'all, but ain't nothing like a, a good trial to put some fire up under you, okay? It's either going to kill you or make you live. It's either going to slow you down and cripple you or give you the strength to run. And Jesus that came out and he that came out a blaze. He that came out a blaze and they can't slow him down. He's, he's teaching from this boat and, 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 and as Peter has yielded himself to what Jesus is doing in his midst, then Jesus then rewards him. Yes, Lord. He rewards him with the instruction. I'm sorry. He rewards him with divine counsel. He rewards him with a word from God. He, he rewards him with an instruction to take a risk. I know you could have done it your way before. I know you're the master at this. I know you didn't already wash your nets for the night. You didn't already called your wife and told her you headed home, honey. You didn't already told her to pick up pizza, baby. And what kind you want? You done told him you'll be there in 20 minutes, all right? You done promised her tonight we're going to the movies. I ain't catching nothing anyway. It's going to be your night. And Jesus said, no, but before you hang it all up, before you throw it all away, I want to push you. I want to give you a divine push. I want to give you an opportunity to see me work. Can you take a risk with me? Oh, God. Can I push you into uncharted waters? Can I push you further than you've been? Can I push you to an uncomfortable place? It's some of y'all who uncomfortable right now. Because you don't know what to expect. Like, God, I didn't need this before. I don't want no mess. Oh, God, you don't know what to expect. You don't know. They're shaking in their boots on one side. I'm pushing you out. I'm pushing you to a different place. I'm pushing you somewhere you haven't been before. It might look familiar. It might feel familiar. Oh, but baby, this is a push from me. I'm sending you there. I'm giving you a divine GPS. I'm putting you on divine locator. Oh, my God, and I'm calling everything out of sight. 
into your net to find you there. I'm calling every day that I've assigned to your boat. All to come where you are. You ain't even got to chase it down. All you got to do is wash your out. All you got to do is stretch out at my word. All you got to do is obey my command. And I'm going to do something wonderful. I'm going to do better than you ever expected, my God. I'm going to try to wrap up in the next few minutes. We see in verse 2, we see something happen. We see that they were faithful stewards even when they did not produce the results that they wanted. They still were faithful. They didn't produce the results that they wanted. Come on, somebody. My God. Oh, Jesus. But they said, we're going to watch these next get ready for tomorrow. All right. Oh, God. They didn't take on a spirit of failure in their spirit. Because God got to be able to trust you when it looked like it ain't going to never work. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God got to be able to trust you when you say, God. Now, this is getting ridiculous. Okay. God got to be able to trust you when you say, God, what is the point of this? I done done everything you told me to do. I've been faithful the way you told me to be faithful. And it seemed like you didn't backslid on your results. Seemed like you just did not come through. Seemed like you're making me the laughing stock. Oh, God. You're bringing me to a point of embarrassment. But one thing I found out in my life, one place I had to get to with God, is that it's up to me to obey. And it's up to God to do. That the results are on God.
want you to launch it. Now that you've let me handle my business, let me bless your business. Yeah, I'm sorry. Now that you have allowed me space in, into what I gave you, even though you didn't realize it was me that gave it to you. It's because you allowed me space in there now, because he had told him just launch out a little. Now that my work is done, let me bless you. Let me bless you because you made room for God. Let me bless you because you made room for the word. Let me bless you because you made room for whatever I wanted to do. Let me bless you because you made space for a kingdom agenda. He said, so now you've been where it has been safe. You've been close to the edge, but I want you to launch out. I want you to launch out to the deep. We gonna go a little further. He said to the deep. And baby, you gotta quit hanging around folk who comfortable with the shallow. Shallow all right sometimes, baby. But let me tell you where my resting place is. It's in the deep. I'm deep, baby. I am deep. 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 If you don't want nothing from God, that's your business and that's your Oh, <laughs> 
committed. I'm committed to becoming better. I'm committed to becoming bigger. God had to push them out. He said, yeah, you've been in a comfortable place, but now you got to launch. You got to foster. You got to put your all in the this. You got to go out deeper. He lost them out into a deep place. He lost them out where the big fish was. Come on, son. Tell your neighbor God's about to launch you out with the big fish. And your big and the big fish can be whatever you want it to be. Come on. It can be whatever you believe in God for. Because everybody ain't believing God for the same thing. Your big fish might be your house and your car. Somebody else might be their ministry. Somebody else might be their business. Somebody else might be their family. Somebody else might be money. Somebody else might be retirement. Somebody else might be a promotion. But God's about to launch you out into that thing. God's about to launch you out into a deeper place. You can't stay where it's shallow. You can't stay where they don't want nothing. You can't stay where they intimidated by your growth. You can't stay where they mad because you done learned a little bit. You can't stay around people who upset with you grow growing instead of people who applaud you for what you're doing. You got to learn how to get around people. One thing I found out is that people on the same level celebrate on the same level. Don't nobody think you hating, but people who don't want what you got. Oh my God. And that was because 
because it was too many fish. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Jesus. I hear music. I declare I just heard a hand in B3 organ. The net only broke because they had too many fish. So God took them from some failing fishermen. Oh, God took divine distribution centers. He took them from failing fishermen to now be able to distribute what they had to others. They called in another boat and said, I want you to Oh, my God. 
you saved for the next five years. And you've been shouting out for that. But can I tell you what God is about to do for you? You ain't going to be able to calculate this one. Oh, God about to throw you a surprise in there. Oh, God. God is about to do what you can never do for yourself. God is about to flip. He's about to flip your return on investment. He's about to flip it. What used to take you years to do, God's about to do it overnight. God's about to do it in three months. God's about to do it in the next year. What you've been struggling for for the last ten years, it's going to look like it's been done overnight. Because God don't do it so quickly. God don't do it so suddenly. Oh my God. But you got to take the risk. You got to launch on out. You got to launch out in the deep. Oh God. You got to launch out. Launch out into woo, Jesus. Into the deep. Somebody say I'm a divine risk taker. I'm a divine risk taker. God's about to bless you so that it is going to bring you. It's going to bring you to you. I'll bring you. Oh, Jesus. Hey, glory. It's going to bring you to your knees. It says, and when Simon Peter saw what God had done, it says, because they, their ship was so full that it began to sink. And when Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees. And he said, Jesus, leave me because I'm too sinful. For you to be around, Apostle Lee 101. For he was astonished. Somebody say, God's about to astonish you. For he was astonished in all that were with him at the catch of fish which they had taken in. And so, and so also was James and John, the sons of thunder, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto them, Do not fear. Do not fear, because what I've allowed you to do today with this type of fish. From now on, you'll do with a new kind of fish. I'm going to make you fishers of men. So sometimes God brings us into that place of increase, y'all. So that God can send in the harvest. Y'all, I'm... So that God can God can use a pole mountain. Come on, somebody. Come on. Ain't nobody want Jesus. And he ain't done nothing for you. Can't nobody want Jesus. And he ain't worked no miracles for you. Can't nobody want Jesus. And he ain't worked nothing out for you. But this next miracle God about to do for you. The next is, oh my God. This next harvest of fish. He bringing into your life in abundance that he's bringing into your life. It's just the bait. Come on. I'm sorry. I'm running. I'm running. It's just the bait. I'm I'm done, y'all. Somebody say I'm a divine risk taker. I'm a divine risk taker. I'm a divine risk taker. I'm done. There was a poem by Mother Teresa, and it went something like this. It says, if you are kind to people, they will accuse you of being selfish and have ulterior motives. But be kind anyway. We're talking about risk takers. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. They'll succeed anyway. People will often be unreasonable, illogical, self-centered, but forgive them anyway. If you are honest and frank, people will cheat you and deceive you, but be honest anyway. What you spend years building, someone may try to destroy it overnight, but build it anyway. <laughs> if you find peace, serenity, and happiness, people will be jealous, but be happy. <laughs> be happy. <laughs> the good you do today. 
day, people will often forget about tomorrow. But do good. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Give the world the best you have. And it may never be enough. But give the world the best you have. Anyway. Hey, y'all preaching good. It's always been between just you and God. It was never been between you and them. Amen. Anyway. Yes, sir. It's always been between you and God. It's never been between you and them. Somebody shout, I'm a divine rest. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, we ask you to receive that Yes, thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.